All right. Huh. <sighs> this will be a retake of the first episode of the thing because I had it muted the whole time. Ah, oh, jeez. But at least I didn't get too, too far into the story here. So, yeah. All right. Let's get back on. I'm, I'm, I'm just double checking. So, you, you guys, it's you're not going to hear much. You're only hearing my voice right now. But um, I'm just double checking. All right. Now we're going to hop in. Just like before. Keep the settings like that. Sound down. All right. The life and suffering of Sir Bronte. In times of the fall of the blessed Arcanian Empire. Alright. Let us do a new game. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, like, just exactly like I was doing before. I'm gonna try to recreate it, but not too much. So, we're going with the name. I was thinking. Oh. Gavrilo Bronte. I have a little bit of exoticness to my name. And for game mode, I put it. You know, this, we're going to play this like real life, you know? You don't know the consequences of what you say to people. So, it's got to be hidden. This is, this one, this means that we will not be able to go back to previous chapters and change decisions. So, we'll have to do that for a second playthrough. So, yeah, we're going to go put that in there. Disabled, so Iron Man, and hidden for the choices. Sir Gavrilo Bronte. Let's get it right into it. Before you lies the story of a single man. You will take on the role of Sir Bronte and determine his goal and fate in life, from his birth to his true death. Our hero is unfortunate enough to be born in a cruel and ruthless world. One that is different from yours in many ways that may not be immediately apparent. This means you must be ready to learn the ways of this wor world one step at a time. Your every decision will affect your hero's personality and family, his friends and foes, even the outcomes of important events. The decisions you will ultimately influence the state of affairs throughout the nation. When given a choice, choose whatever feels right for the world and for yourself. How will you live this life entrusted into your care? Will Sir Bronte turn the tide of history or will he be ground into dust by the millstone of fate? This is for you to decide. All right, guys. Wow. Yo. I said this while I was uh, muted during the first uh, take. I didn't get too far. Don't worry. But this is this is goddamn sick. This is cool. You know, I'm 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 a big fan of these uh, of these text adventures. Of uh, the choose your own paths. It started, um, the bug started from the library getting those little Goosebumps novels or the other little ones that are choose your own path. They're so cool. And I've never actually played a visual novel before, so this is actually my first one. So it's gonna be pretty cool. And, um, yeah, like I just love, I love the atmosphere. I love how it's a big book and then just the graphics. It, it's, it's cool. Bottom line, it's cool. All right. At the end of time, your fingers are stained with ink, your breathing grows ragged. Your hands are shaking, yet the words begin appearing on the page before you one by one, clinging together to form a chronicle of your own life. Who are you? How did you reach this end? You were born and raised and lived your entire life in the blessed Arcanian Empire. In this land, a, a man's, I was about to say child, a man's destiny is predetermined at the moment of his birth, whether human or Arcanian, nobleman, priest, or lowborn commoner, all bend to the will of the twin gods, and each life is not but a single cog in the universe's immeasurable machine. The memories come flooding back. They engulf you as a merciless wave, binding together days that are thrice dead and gone. The dreams of your childhood, your adolescence, your youth spent in the capital, Years of peace teeming with life, and a war drenched in blood. High ranks and lowly deeds, opulent palaces, secretive city backstreets, fields of battle and faces of so many faces, faces so many faces, of the people you held dear, the people who walked this road by your side. Such was your life, now all exposed by ink, erupting into the page with your every step. You sought to 
change the world as you saw fit. The choices of your upbringing, the path you carved in your youth, the fruits of your struggle, the consequences of your sacrifice, all of it led you to here, to the end of your time. And every choice had a price. Now years and years later, the crossroads of your life echo in your memory. The pain and joy inextricably intermingled. Could you have taken a different path? Chosen a different calling? Found a different place in the world? You have the power to alter the very course of history. Now, on the verge of death, you struggle with doubt, seeking answers to the last and most crucial question of all, your life. Of all paths in life, why did you walk this one? Did you choose your own fate? Or was your life shaped by forces beyond your control? What determines a man's destiny? Huh, so the man himself, the world around. You know what? I'm gonna make an executive decision and say the man himself. It's always up to you. And that's a little life hack there. You wanna do something? You start. Ha ha. You guys do your thing. Be yourself. That is who's, you, who's in charge of your guest. That's how we're gonna play this. That's how we're gonna play this game. Oh. Okay, that's. <laughs> you know, those. Alright. You can hear death's footsteps drawing near. You square your shoulders and take a deep, full breath. You have found your final answer. What is destiny other than a long chain of your own actions and decisions? No matter what happened in your life, you always had a choice. You lived the life you deserved. Only you can answer for it. Mm. That's crazy. But are you right about this? Is it all true? To learn the truth, you, ha you will have to return to the very beginning, remembering every step you took along the way. On these pages, the story of a man named Gavrilo Bronte will live once more. And so it begins. Oh, sick. Okay, childhood, adolescence, youth, peacetime, revolt. All right, guys, let's see what happens. Chapter one, childhood. Oh, I have to click, okay. But yeah, that's little, little Bronte, that's us. That is his family, I assume. Spooky. Child. Childhood. Where life begins. First words. First unsteady steps. You are but a small child learning about the world in which you were born. To you, everything is so new, so baffling, and so unforgiving. A long, trying life stretches before you. So many feats and faults. So many faithful choices to come. Yet, you are already sowing the seeds of your future self. You are learning to live and survive in this world, looking for a place within it to call your own, choosing your future destiny. Who will you grow up to be? I always ask myself that question because I am not very old, yet I am young. Old young man, Gabbaning. But in this case, we're Gab Bronte. Childhood. Oh, that's the same thing as we read before. Important life events may happen to you this chapter, so the fencing lesson. Oh, beyond. Oh, what? We could die? Okay. I didn't even read that last. I didn't miss that last time. Okay. Insight. Hmm. Tells you about the ways of the world and the lots of its inhabitants. Nobleman's Sacrament. Kiss the sword. I wouldn't kiss a sword. Those are very sharp. Probably would cut my face. Challenge. Seize a noble lot. Okay. So that's pretty crazy. Represents your perseverance and strength of character. Your ability to get your way. Frame of mind. Spineless. Okay. Perception. Affects your frame of mind and the skills you have when you grow up. Represents how attentive you are. Oh, uh, comprehend stuff. I get you. Willpower. Zero to nine. Ready for action. That is most likely because we chose, um, destiny is made by the man, by ourselves. Death. Oh. After suffering, one is reborn. 
Oh, yeah, and willpower represents. Oh, yeah, okay. This one. So, destiny, personality, house of Bronte, family. Oh, well, that's cool. So, I bet this talks about our what's unfolding. This is probably about how we're turning out, whether we turn out as a dick or something. House of Bronte is probably the social status. And family, I assume, is family. Family screen. All right, let's begin. Oh, damn. The atmosphere. At first, there was nothing. No time, no sensation. Nothing but darkness and void. But then a will breathed life into nothingness. Matter and spirit were set in motion. History began its march. <coughs> I am baby. It was your turn to enter this world. Your first memory, you are lying on your back, blinded by a bright white light. You are not alone. Above you tower the colossal creatures of those who created you. You are a part of them, as they are a part of you. Between you and them is an inexplicable connection, a strong, unbreakable link. They will always watch over you, guard you, and protect you. It hurts to breathe. You let out the pain in a form of a desperate scream. Your creators extend their hands towards you. There are two of them. The ones who made your form from their own selves and brought you into this world. They are united, yet, as they lean closer, you begin to see how different they are. You can already feel their differences between you, struggling against each other. The first figure is soft and emphatic, wise and merciful. The love that emanates from it wraps you, head to toe like an invisible blanket, the warmth from it never ending. The second figure is strong and noble, commanding, wait, strong, oh, sorry, brain fart, is strong and powerful, commanding, and noble. It is harsh but fair, a beacon of guidance, a force of protection and merciless punishment for every misdeed. Yet, there is also a third figure. It is like a shadow barely seen behind them, yet already pulsing with an unbreakable will to live. It is the very li will to live that is now growing ever stronger within you. Is that the doctor? Hmm. Okay, that's a, so a soft open palm, a strong closed fist, a lingering distant shadow. You struggle to loosen the swaddling clothes wrapped around you, and you extend a tiny hand into the world. Reach out to the palm, reach out to the fist. <laughs> you know, as a baby... I've never seen a baby, or even heard of the occurrence of a baby, fucking coming out smiling. No screaming or anything. Why the hell would I smile at the shadow? And I assume the shadow of the doctor is some shit. He's probably sitting there. You know, and... Uh, that's... That's, uh... I, that's, that's a no for me. I don't think we're smiling here. Reach out to the fist. You know, from... Judging based on the other one, the other one's more loving figure, and I think, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna make Gavrilo Bronte a kind of loving, compassionate person. And this one seems a little more cold and calculated, so we're gonna go for the, the lovable, compassionate build here. For this character. Your little palm awkwardly clasps a soft finger. You explore your mother's hands by touch. Ooh, it's Mama Bronte. She smiles gently as her arms wrapped around you and lift you up. She smells of home, that indescribable smell, that feeling of safety that is second to none. Ooh, perception plus one. Her embrace is the warmest place in the world, a place you want to stay for all eternity. Your life in this world begins. How will you live it? Birth, 1,188. Oh, shit. One, 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 eight. I am so... I am too tired today. I am... Yo, we're one year old. Little baby, little baby to infant. Zero to a hundred, real swift. Ooh, there you go. Building up some... See, that's a thing I like about this. This is actually pretty neat. Like, I keep saying it's neat, but it's like, this is neat. I love how just for a few seconds it plays the audio of that of that environment just to kind of get you in the atmosphere without like, you know, just bashing your ears to a bloody pulp. 
with loudness for like a consistent period of time like it's not just playing some stupid nature music for the whole sequence it's like just a little bit of a glimpse so we're outside in a foresty tropical somewhat area not maybe for maybe just a forest it's just those ferns are throwing me off whatever the hell those are hide and seek as the days go by you learn to tell your parents apart you recognize father by his heavy breath and strong cold hands he visits you rarely Thanks, Dad. Fuck you. <laughs> Robert Bronte. Hello there, little Gavrilo Bronte. Uh, that's the voice for Robert Bronte now. Uh, it's, uh, that's that's uh, that, that's how it should be. Mother's tender voice, however, follows you day and night. My, you are growing so quickly, my child. That's the voice for Mama Bronte. Uh, that's, that's how it is. Uh, no. There are two more children in the family named Stefan and Gloria. Gloria sings songs to you. She often dresses you in tight clothing and gently holds your hands as you learn to take your first steps. Thanks, Gloria. Stefan likes to sweep you up and pinch you and toss you into the air. What the fuck is your issue, Stefan? Okay. Already, disclaimer here, friends. When I get old enough, I'm going to beat the fuck out of Stefan. This guy's an asshole. I don't care if he's related. Who the fuck throws a baby in the air? Like, I am not, I'm not a doctor by any means. You know, I, I hold, I have nothing, no experience in the medical field. But I can guarantee you that every doctor wouldn't suggest tossing your fucking baby into the air. Their, their heads are too malleable. You you throw it up into the air and it, like, let's let's say you're five foot, you throw it up in the air that you, you're going to be dropped from, like, what, six, seven feet? That's dumb as shit. Why the fuck? I don't like Stefan. See, Gloria, Gloria right here, that's... That's S tier. She's S tier for family right now. She is just, she is dressing me in tight clothing, holding my hand as I learn to take first steps. Perfect. What a nice lady. Stefan here, fuck boy. Oh, look, it's your brother and sister. Oh, fuck this guy. Look at this asshole, guys. Holy shit. See, this is what I mean. When I get old enough, I'm gonna whoop his ass. This is a punchable face, and these are some very breakable legs. Fuck this guy. Who throws a goddamn baby around? What a piece of shit. Fuck this guy. Uh, let's see. Um, Yeah, you're my little brother. We're gonna play together, but I'll always be in charge because you're part of Connor. Fuck you, Steven. Steven, Stefan, Steph. Fuck you. This guy sucks. He's so ugly, man. I, 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 I am so, like, disturbed to be related to this guy. Oh, there's Gloria. Um, Be quiet, you. He doesn't understand yet. Come on, baby Gabrillo. Let's play in the yard. See, like, S-tier Gloria coming in for the clutch. We got F-tier uh, Stefan. We're gonna leave him back there. All right. It is hot outside. You grip your brother's hand with one hand and your sister's with another as they help you walk down the giant stone stairs. First and foremost, get the fuck off me, Stefan. You throw me around. I don't want him touching me. I wish there was an option for that. Then you sit on the ground and start exploring the sparse blades of grass with your fingers. It tickles. In the sky, far above and away from you, is a gigantic pillar. And a perfectly straight stick made of light. It is so bright it hurts to look at. What the hell is that thing supposed to be? The Eye of Sauron? Kinda looks like, I mean, if you... Hmm. Oh, fuck. Fuck this guy! I, I really don't like this guy. You guys don't realize how much I hate him. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a waste of, 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 of words. It's a waste of breath. It's a waste of air. Stefan is useless. Fuck Stefan. What an asshole. Look at this. Why, why are you staring at the shining pillar? It's not going anywhere, you know. Well, I'm a baby. Can, can you imagine that? Holy shit, this guy's a dick. Hey, I want to play hide and seek. Why don't you go fuck yourself, Stefan? I don't want to play any games with you, man. I'm a baby. I'm just going to go... Yeah, see? See? She's got it. Gloria's smart. He's just a little... He's just a little baby. How's he supposed to play? She's got a point... Uh, this guy's weird. Oh, whatever. Then you hide him. I'll try to find both of you. Fuck you, Stefan. I'm so pissed. I don't know why I'm so aggravated at him. It's just the fact that at the start, he's tossing me in the air and pinching me. That is... Why are you doing that? Why do you do that for fun? Why are you playing goddamn catch with your baby brother? Ugh, jeez. You have no idea what they're talking about. But you support... Oh, I shit. I, I realized that a baby wouldn't be talking like I am. He would be probably... Maybe internal... Actually, I'm the voice of the baby internally. So maybe he's like a stewy baby. Like, he's... On the outside, they think he's like goo goo ga ga -ing. 
but then in reality, he's actually very well articulated. Oh, he's, he's, uh, he's, he has the ability to articulate very well at about a young adult level. <laughs> you have no idea what they're talking about, but you support them with happy cooing. This is strange, but so exciting. Stefan and Gloria glance at each other. Then your brother walks to a big tree, closes his eyes, and starts shouting something. Probably counting. It's either that or he's just talking to the tree because, you know, that that's not out of character for Stefan because I hate him. He's dumb. He's a dumb asshole. Gloria takes your hand and walks you through the, the yard. All right, thanks, Gloria. Mm. Uh, your sister takes you behind some thick bushes by a tight, tall wall. The light from that light stick on the horizon barely reaches here. You can't see home from this place. The ground is crawling with tiny bugs. Gloria sits you down on the ground and puts her finger to her mouth for some reason. And then she's gone. So, so we're baby. We're supposed to be a baby, but... You know, actually, well, let's see what happens here. Okay, you can no longer hear Stefan's voice. Gloria is nowhere to be seen. You feel colder. The bugs are no fun to play with. You've been sitting here for a long time. Ugh, excuse me. Completely alone. Nobody checks on you. Did they forget about you? Did they abandon you? Okay, I mean, the generic baby thing to do is cry, but I think, we're, like, we're gonna, we're, we're a pretty perceptive baby. We're probably just gonna chill out. You know, maybe, maybe, like, since we're a baby, we're just, like, chilling. You know, like, we've been put there amongst a bunch of other things. Maybe we're just touching stuff, like, playing with things, just chilling. So I think we're, we're gonna go sit there and wait. I don't, I, I don't trust find your way home, especially at the start since said I could die. I feel like I'm gonna fall into a river or drown or something. I don't know. Um, again, I don't know what's gonna happen in the future of this book. I, I haven't, I haven't watched anything, etc. So this is going to be as much of a surprise for you guys as it is to me. We're going to wait. Ooh. The bush is covered with leaves swaying in the wind. You brush through them with your fingers. The twigs and branches are stiff and will not bend. They are different from this blades of grass. Down on the ground you see a group of bugs carrying a little twig. You grab it from them. They're so funny. One of the bugs crawls, crawls on your... Oh, no, I think that's a typo. Crawls on your finger and bites it. Just enough to sting a little. I'm gonna kill that bug. You hear you hear brisk steps and the leaves and twigs start rustling and parting. Wow, that, that's real immersive, those sounds. Your mother leans over to you. You greet her with a happy face and show her the fig, finger with the bug on it. Hey, what's up, Lydia? What's up, Mama? So that's where they took you. Mother picks you up, puts you to her chest, and pats you on, on the head. Your brother and sister standing by clearly feel... Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, Gloria, I'm sorry. You've been moved down the tier list. So you did this on purpose. I'm a goddamn baby. I'm just, I'm trying to chill out. I didn't even know what you guys were playing a game. Wow. Fuck you. Fuck you, Stefan and Gloria. Okay, so now I, uh, we have come to the conclusion. Stefan and Gloria are no longer SS tier. I mean, they were S tier only. Uh, actually, no, Stefan was never S tier. So Gloria is going from S tier to C tier now. And Stefan is going from F to uh, Z because he's garbage. He's a garbage human being. Gloria's in tears. Keep staring at his face. No, you should. Oh, perception two. Plus one equals two. Curious. You hug mother tightly. She is here now. Thanks, mom. Fuck, these siblings are dumb. How old am I now? Oh, I'm just two years old. It's not really much of a jump. Oh, cool. What's going on here? The Great Descent. Another memory. You are still a little child, but you can barely talk and run around on your own. Well, I am too. Today is out of the ordinary. Father is busy around the house, giving orders to the servants. Throughout the day, the kitchen has been abuzz with work, and there are solemn, gloomy preparations and candles being lit. Even your older brother, Stefan, is quiet today. And that's always a good thing. You know, whenever Stefan opens his mouth, he is, he is polluting the air with his stupidity. Stefan should remain quiet, not just for today, but for ever. Forever. All right. Mother takes your hand and brings you to your sister, C tier Gloria. All right. My son, today is the great descent. We honor the day when the twin gods descended to us. We must spend this day in reverence to the gods. You are too young to understand, so just do everything your sister says for now. I'm still working on that voice. It'll get better through this series, uh, I swear. <laughs> Gloria takes you to the plate. Oh, fuck, that's daunting. What the hell is this? Okay, I am sufficiently creeped up, friends. Um, I, I'm, 
Okay, I, I mean, I read it out. I already read it in my mind, but I mean... Gloria takes you to the playroom. There are no toys. There are there. No chairs. Even the carpet has been taken away. There is nothing but a bare wooden floor and a fucking candle, it appears. Oh my goodness. Gloria, I am probably gonna have to down-tier you even more because you are sufficiently freaking me out. What the... Imagine this. I mean, sure, you're two and you don't understand much, but I mean, like, why the hell... Like, your sibling on some type of event for reverence for the gods takes you to a goddamn, like, bleak blank room. And I'm already pretty anxious. Um, because it's giving me vibes from... Okay, okay. Uh, I'll see what else happens. Maybe, maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe I'm just a little scaredy cat. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm getting a little freaked out here. Because she's... Like, look at this. This is this is haunting. This is haunting. Gloria, you C-tiered beauty. Today, we're not allowed to go to any other rooms. And we'll be eating nothing but gruel and stale bread. On the day of the descent, everyone must be where they belong. Oh, no. Uh, is this where I die for the first... Holy shit. I'm getting... I'm getting a little freaked out because I just don't like how she said where they belong. It's quiet, unusually so. Muffled voices from beyond the door are all you can hear. You are sitting on the cold floor, confused, with no idea what to do. Then you hear sister's voice, a lonely sound in the empty room. It's a little song that mother taught her. You hold your breath as you listen to it. Oh, okay. Singing some songs. When the twins came down to earth, they brought lots for every birth. Let's count them. One, two, three. The twins made them for you and me. Nobles rule and barely, bravely fight. They protect us with their might. Priests work hard to understand. Guide us by the twins' commands. Common people work and toil. Always patient, never spoil. Live your lot. Where you were born, to the day when you pass on, know your lot and know the prayer for the twin see everywhere. Ta -ta. Thanks, Gloria. That was really that was very nice, especially in this creepy room. And this image is still here. I'm just like I don't know if like something's gonna pop up there or like jump scare me and then I'll have a heart attack and die die during this recording. You are transfixed by the gay tune, Gloria. Oh, I'm getting near. Oh, okay, that. Gloria, you are now D-tier. I've down-tiered you further. That is creepy as shit. I hate... That's the thing. Whenever it says a smile creeps across anyone's face, that always creeps me out. I assume, like, a real creepy smile. Like a... <laughs> yes. Like, like, just ominous. Not cool, Gloria. All right, Gloria knows your gaze. Smile creeps across. Okay, I don't feel so good, uh, Mr. Stark. Uh, okay. You like the rhyme, don't you, Gavrillo? You know what it's all about. Look, there are three lots. They were brought to us by the twins when they descended to us from the shining pillar. Remember that pillar of light on the horizon? That's it. You can see the shining pillar anytime, from anywhere in the world. If you follow your lot as you live, you'll reach the peak of the pillar. And if you don't, you'll get eternal torment at the foot. Shit, I'm creeped out by my- <laughs> that creeped me out. Oh, wow. Um... Is she okay? And why is this image still the same? I don't know what's gonna happen here. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't- What, is she gonna kill me or sacrifice me to the devil or something? I don't- I don't like where this is going. Oh, I'm nervous. All right. I'm sketched out. I am thoroughly sketched out. You know... Ah, uh, I'm- no Maybe I'm just a little on edge because uh, yesterday I digitally watched a movie with me and oh, it was with my friends. It was a Korean horror movie about a, a haunted asylum. And it's just giving me these vibes that she's been possessed or something. And I just have, oh, I'm getting goosebumps because I have the face, like, I have the face, like, in my mind of this jump scare, which was real sketchy. And I'm just afraid that, I know it's just a visual novel, but I, I no one knows what's going to happen. Is something going to pop up on my screen? Is there gonna be like a, a chick with black eyes just like in the in the movie? I'm not talking about swollen eyes as in like the whole eyeballs were black. Just pitch black. And then she 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 went like uh, like jump scared the screen, zoomed in onto her face. It was sketchy as shit. So like maybe I'm on edge from that. Um I, okay, sorry to keep stalling. We'll we'll continue reading it. Just just uh j I'm just trying to defend my case here. Maybe I'm just a scary to cap, maybe I'm more reacting, we'll see how it goes. You and I are slowborn. 
Mom is a commoner too, so the lot of you. The lot for you and me is to suffer and be patient and work hard. Understand? The priests and nobles have other lots. The nobles fight and rule over everybody. The priests, well, I'm not really sure what they do, but I guess they talk to the twins. And they teach everybody. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, that's fucking, I don't like that. I don't like that noise. That's what I mean. Is this like, what am I playing? What am I playing? Oh my god, I'm just a, I don't, oh, okay, I'm sketched out. I have goosebumps. Uh, ooh, I get those goosebumps every time. Uh, all right. Gloria stares at you intently. <laughs> I don't like Gloria anymore. I really don't. What the hell? Did you get it, silly? And she shakes her head and keeps singing the song over and over again. Her voice transfixes you, drawing you in. The room starts to grow like glow like the sky. From this light emerges two figures you have known ever since the moment of your birth. One of them embraces your sister's shoulder. The other stands guard behind your back. You watch this happening before your very eyes, unable to turn away. What the fuck is going on? Oh, okay. Gloria is swaying to the songs, unaware what is happening. She sings the final verses once more. Know your lot and know the prayer. You feel compelled by this divine sight to express yourself somehow. You feel words condensing within you from the light. But what will these words be? Finish the song properly. Finish the line. Okay. Of course we're not going to do the last line wrong. Because I feel like we're going to get fucking destroyed. This is some devilish cult shit. I don't know if I... I feel like... If we sing the last line wrong, we're gonna get sacrificed to the devil or something. She's gonna slit our throat and start dancing around us or something. Cause like I'm I'm sufficiently creeped out. Good job, Gloria. You D-tiered piece of shit. She is D-tier now. She is garbage. Uh finish this up. We're doing it properly. We Okay. Is there gonna be noises? Please don't catch me off guard. Know your lot and know what is happening. Okay, okay, that's good. No audios. Know your lot and know the prayer. Or the twins see everywhere. Oh, oh shit! Fuck! God damn it! Oh my god! I fuck this game! I just wanted a storybook. <laughs> my palms are sweaty. My knees weak. Vomit on my sweater already. Oh jeez. You sing the last line together with Gloria. Your sister looks up at you in a surprise and gives you a nod. A shining pair standing behind her back turned to look at you. This is not cool. You can feel their gaze piercing you from top to bottom. When the moment passes, they melt into the dim light coming from the shadow. Gloria turns her head to look where you're standing. I feel like there's going to be a jump scare here. She's Her face is going to pop into the screen and her fucking eyes are going to be like pitch black and there's going to be blood seeping from her eyes. No, I guess not. All right. Did you see? Oh, that's fucked. What is... What, what did she do? Did she unlock... Did she open the gates to hell? What happened? She didn't even see the- Dude, I'm- This is not cool. Did you see something? You shake your head. Not anymore. That is ominous. Get me the fuck out of this chapter. Oh, okay, we survived. Alright, now we're three years old. We are going at a very small crawl here. I don't- I don't know why we're still infants in infantry. Ooh, okay, I'm still- still a little freaked. Ah, all right. For there, we're going to take a little break, Ski. Uh, I'm going to review the footage um, and how we did. How I did, at least. So that that, that concludes part one of uh, Gavrilo Bronte's story as a child from year one to year two. Uh, oh, shit. I don't even think. I'm just afraid of the future. I mean, we're, I'll take a little break. Um, I, I, know, I know you guys are thinking, oh, what a scaredy cat. That is creepy as shit. The atmosphere, what I was imagining... And then the, the, the fact of the... I don't know, I was creeping myself out too. <laughs> but um, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope the quality of this video is good. I was messing around with a few settings. But either way, it's going to go up as is. Um, it's going to go up as is. Even though it's a little glitchy, a little meh. You know, hopefully I'll watch it all through. If it's passable, then I'll still uh, upload it. If not, then maybe the series will be pooched. It'll be thrown in the garbage. But um, yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope you liked it. Um, let me know if you enjoyed it, such and so. If you want to keep hearing about the story of Gavrilo Bronte, then, yeah. Stay tuned. I love you all. And...
Bye-bye.